Welcome to the Butcher Ball Black Show. I'm your host, Christian, and this is the Bears cast for week three. Um, Bears lose 21 to 16 to the Colts. And I don't necessarily know how I'm going to do this one because a um, little inside the, uh, the show here, I am out of market. So I live in another state that the Bears get their local games in. I live in Dallas. So I'm back in Dallas. This started as a Dallas Cowboys YouTube channel and a little bit of the Bears, and it went to the Bears because I'm a Bears fan when I moved back home. So still going to do the Bears stuff even though I'm here. So I watch these games, unless they're like a national game like last week, I watch these games in a different place and then... I try I take notes about the games and what I do is I listen to the game to um the I listen to the game using NFL Plus with the radio call and then I watch the game in the bar. So in the bar there's um in the bar there's I'm watching the Steelers and the um cuz the TV next to me has the Steelers and the uh the Chargers game. So I'm watching Justin Fields and I'm going to bring up Justin Fields in a second. There's a reason why I bring him up. Um they're playing on the big screen and they're actually playing the sound of the uh Vikings in Houston game. That's important cuz of the Bears last week. And in the corner of the bar, I'm watching, um, there's the Green Bay Packers and there is the, um, the ten- Tennessee Titans. So I'm trying to think if there's anything of note else. So now there, there isn't. And I bring up the Steelers and I bring up the Vikings game and I bring up the, um, the uh, Steelers, the Vikings game, and bring up the Green Bay game because the Vikings and Green Bay is in our division. And the Vikings totally lit up Texas, the Texans lat- today, and we hung in there with them. And everybody was saying the Texans are supposed to be um, a Super Bowl contender and how good they was and how dominant their offense is and how good their defense is. They got lit up today by the Vikings with Sam Darnold and the like. I I didn't see the whole game, but just seeing like glimpses of the game. I think when I, when I was looking at it or when I noticed it was like thirty one to seven. So they got lit up. I'm watching Green Bay with Malik Willis, a dude that basically the Titans gave up on, and he was just picked up as a free agent um, to back up Jordan Love. I'm watching, you know, them figuring out a game plan to make this dude win games. And I'm watching Justin Fields do Justin Fields things. And we basically gave, because I didn't do this show when Justin Fields, the last show I did before before I took a break and before I redid restarted this again, the last YouTube show, because this is going to be exclusively YouTube for the moment, was... The night he got drafted. And I said then the Bears are going to mess up his career. And the fact that Justin Fields got traded for a six-round pick that hopefully turns into a fourth if he starts. And still watch him do Justin Fields things. You know, he's as accurate as he's going to get. He has talent around him. And he can still move and run around the ball. And Meanwhile, I'm watching Caleb Williams, who... Is not really a runner. Is not really an athlete, and he's athletic to the point that he was gonna throw. He runs to throw, kind of like Russell Wilson, because there was a lot of dumb stuff that was said in relation to Justin Fields and Caleb Williams. Like, I watch Caleb Williams, and this is not a, a bashing Caleb Williams thing, because I like Caleb Williams. And the first game against Tennessee, I liked his poise. I kind of liked his poise in the uh, game against the Texans and stuff. This game, as 
partially, partially of the Texans game, he has regressed to me. Like, I feel like he's thrown picks. Um, this line is bad, and this line needs to be fixed. This offensive line needs to be fixed. But Justin Fields got the raw end of the deal, and I watched this young man go 3-0 three, go three and oh today and light up the Chargers. And the Chargers are supposed to are a good football team with a good coach. And I watched Justin Fields lead these guys to a to a victory. And meanwhile, a dude that is supposed to be a better prospect than Justin is for the second game in a row can't they can't figure out how to get this kid going until the third quarter, basically. The third quarter Honestly, the fourth quarter. These slow starts got to stop. Um, I'm watching Green Bay's better than us. Um, I don't know about the Lions yet. Um, I Minnesota, basically, in this division, because I'm only caring about the division right now, Minnesota is the class of this division. Okay? Like, period. I'm watching Minnesota, and they're doing... Sam Darnold, I don't trust Sam Darnold at all, but Sam Darnold is doing wonderful with uh, with this Vikings coaching staff, and he's killing it. He's killing it right now. So we're going to be last in this division, and this is supposed to, was supposed to be a playoff team, and these are this is the game that you're supposed to win. Indianapolis Colts are not a good football team. They don't know what to do with Anthony, Anthony Richardson. That young man is talented. He's a big dude. He can move. He got a pretty arm, but that dude is inaccurate, and they don't know what to do with him yet. That was, This is a winnable game. There's no reason why um, you, should, you shouldn't have like, figured out how, how to run against them. They have a worse run defense than the Bears do. Like This, could have, this should have easily been a win for, for them. But part of it was you had Caleb Williams throw 52 times. Why is he throwing 52 times? Why? Caleb Williams did it from a statistical standpoint. He did good. 33 of 52, 363 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. I blame one of those interceptions on him. The other one, I blame on a missed assignment and the defensive. I blame it on a... um, I don't blame the jump route or one on him. When the defender, if the defender jumps the route, he jumps the route. You throwing in a double coverage is you throwing in a double coverage. I you tip ball or not. Stop throwing in a double coverage. I hate when quarterbacks do that. Um, second thing that bothered me about this game. All the other quarterbacks I mentioned and all the other games that I've mentioned, they've had offensive coordinators and or coaches, coaching staffs that have figured out how to use these people to the best of their ability, right? Or they're just really good offense coordinators and really good offensive minds. The whole point of Shane Waldron coming here for the Bears is to stabilize the offensive coordinator position because for the past couple of coaching staffs, we've had, or for the past couple of offense coordinators and coaching staffs, Matt Nagy cannot call... With Mr. Bisky and Justin Fields, that man could not call the offense. Go be an offensive coordinator under Andy Reid and go win championships for Kansas City. When Andy Reid retires, I want to see how you do. So I watched Andy Reid, I, I watched Matt Nagy through the whole Mitch era mess Mitch up. And, and Mitch still got you to two, to two um, playoff appearances of a defense i watched him completely mess up justin fields rookie year and for luke getty for two seasons i watched him just mess i watched him just completely mess up and not really understand what you have in justin fields Shane to the point that you let justin fields go you trade him for what you trade him for Six round pick turns into a fourth if he if he gets a certain number of starts. Justin Fields is going to be fine. You you get Shane Waldron here, 
supposedly because he's a career offense coordinator and he's supposed to develop Caleb Williams. You're also supposed to win games because you stack this this defense is, is good. You have a number one receiver. You have a, a the best rookie receiver in the draft. You have a top five tight end. The, you, you, you've gotten decent running backs. Swift was supposed to be a premier running back. You don't y'all don't really know how to use him yet. And you draft a pretty good running back in Roshan Johnson. This team is supposed to be a playoff team now. Or you're supposed to at least try to get in the playoffs now. And why Shane Waldron cannot figure out how to start off decently and figure out how to do an effective running game perplexes me. I do not understand why in the second qu- quarter, the last series or so in the second quarter, you had four downs and you're in the red zone within the 10-yard line and you can't get in the end zone? Knowing what we know now, that's the game. If you if you score at the end of the second half or the first half, rather, that's the game. But yet, once again... Another season where the Bears don't know what to do offensively. So, and you, what is Caleb going to be this this season? Are we just going to let him? Because if we're just going to let him throw fifty two times a game and just figure it out as we as he goes, and maybe go five and twelve, cool. I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to do this. I'm probably still going to bitch about him throwing in the double coverage. And, and such, and I'm going to bitch about the line, but at least I know what to what what to expect now. He's just going to be he's just going to be paid Manning in this bitch, and he's going to throw a bunch of interceptions. And we're not I'm not going to expect to win a lot. But if y'all actually going to try to win games, I need y'all to figure out how to start better in the first part of the game. Like figure out how to do a running game, figure out how to make him comfortable so he doesn't throw. So he can throw attempts that he can actually make because there's still a lot of like incomplete passes and long balls. It takes him like a half to get comfortable. Let me know what's going on, yo, because if he's and and side note, I don't even know if he's the type of quarterback that can do a 52 attempt passing game because I because there's a lot of quarterbacks that can do that. And they're inaccurate, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, they, Dak Prescott being one of them. Like, is he going to be the next the next Dak Prescott, or is he going to be something else? Like, let me know what this is going to be, Bears, because, like, like, if we're just going to watch him just do that, cause, cause, and it, it wasn't even fun. It, like, it, it was a sneaky 363 yards. It wasn't even like, wow, that's... It just it came in like weird chunks. That all this offense isn't even that. So it was weird. Like it was like I'm listening to the game and it was like 363 yards. Wow, because it didn't look like a 363 yard game. But if that's what he's gonna do, that's what y'all are gonna do the whole season. Okay, but if we're gonna try to win, if the goal here is the goal to a, get to a wild card position at the end of the year because I don't think they're, they're going to win a division. I don't think it's going to be close in that. I think everybody else in our division is just better. Um, then we got to figure out something else because them y'all not being able to score for pretty much three quarters on the Colts and this is supposed to be a last place schedule. I don't know y'all figure this out. Anyway, um, I guess that's a rant for me. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. So, stats real quick, because I don't know if I did this already. Um, okay. So, 33 of 52, 363 yards for Caleb Williams. Roshan Johnson, 8 carries for 30 yards. DeAndre Swift, 13 carries for 20 yards. Can we make Roshan the, fe- the the feature back, please? 
uh, Caleb Williams, one carry, eight yards. Khalil Herbert, um, four carries, nine yards. Roma Dunse, one carry, two yards. Um, DJ Moore, one carry, negative six yards. In receiving, Bears, um, six receptions, 112 yards. Cole Komet, 10 receptions, 97 yards. It was a quiet 97. Um, DJ Moore, eight receptions, 78 yards. DeAndre Swift, um, two receptions, 22 yards. DeAndre Carter, three receptions, 22 yards. Um, Bears got two def. Bears got two interceptions. Could have been a, there should have been another interception, but they said it was a forward pass, and they and they said it was um, what was it? It was forward progress stopped. But I digress. Um, the Bay, the Colts got two interceptions by Caleb and a strip sack, and the one jumping the route. As I said earlier, I don't blame Caleb for that. Throwing in the double coverage, I don't. I blame Caleb for that because you throw in the double coverage. Uh, the strip sack, I could say that Caleb pay attention, but this line is bad, and they need to fix that. But yeah, man, that's basically it with this rant. I'll see y'all next week. Later.